Well, quite frankly, uh, the conference hit an impasse in terms of whether decisions should be taken by two-thirds majority or uh, three-quarters. Uh, it was our understanding that uh, the North, loosely so defined, was given the assurance that they could exercise a power of veto on decisions at the conference through the 75% rule, because they did not believe that they've been shortchanged, and they believe that two-thirds was going to favor uh, non-Northern interests. My view really is that even two-thirds will have been difficult to arrive at, because what the President was happy on was consensus. It's very difficult for Nigerians to arrive at a consensus, especially when you have about 500 delegates who have come with uh, separate agendas. So quite sincerely, I think we had a devil's choice. And the conference had to save uh, uh, itself from the threat of uh, conflagration by constituting what they call the 50-man com committee. Uh, what otherwise known as committee of friends of the chairman, uh, as they were called, or which some of us called uh, 50 wise men, I think there are some women there, <laughs> who now forged that arrangement uh, of 70% as a via media, as a halfway house between 75 and 66 two thirds. Mm -hmm. So it's still very mathematical. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, I hope and pray and wish that reason will prevail that as much as possible, we'll be able to engineer uh, a consensus, uh, just like you have uh, in the United Nations, where the favored way of decision making in the UN is by consensus. But Nigerians are hard bargainers, so it might actually bring us to a cul-de-sac. We might not be able to arrive at anything if we go strictly by uh, the standing orders. Okay, just before you went for the national conference, uh, I think you, you were not opposed to national conference, but you were opposed to one that will not be sovereign. But uh, now you have found yourself there. What, what motivation did you have going in for something that is not sovereign in the first place? Well, my view was that uh, we have to seize the moment, uh, see whether if we shake the tree, certain fruits might fall uh, for the masses. Uh, we wanted a sovereign national conference, I agree. But uh, the fact that uh, Jonathan was reluctantly compelled to now say, let's have a confab, uh, was a moment which we felt we should not let pass, OK? So one uh, was caught in between Skylar and Chabridis, uh, what people would say, between a rock and a hard place. Uh, I was personally caught on the horns of a dilemma and uh, the way I became a delegate is what compelled me uh, not to decline to be the spokesperson for my people, as the politicians would say. Or maybe in the interest of the public, you want to know the way you became a delegate. <laughs> well, uh, I had it on good authority that I was suggested to be on the federal government list. But the powers that be felt that uh, I was not an ideal candidate. Uh, for the federal government list. But then I got a call from my governor who suggested that uh, I should go and represent my senatorial district, that's Ekiti North, and that uh, the governors in the West had decided that the Yoruba people must put their best feet forward, that we should not bring the Yoruba third level. And with such a request from my governor, who is very cerebral, and who also uh, knows political savvy. I said, OK, well, we'll give it a shot. And we had, by the way, a summit in Ado Ekiti uh, about six weeks ago on what should be the Ekiti agenda at that conference. So we are not just going there uh, with an empty mind. And I'm aware also of the Yoruba agenda, uh, which is over 300 pages. It's almost like a doctoral thesis. They had meetings. Uh, in Ibadan, where the Yoruba agenda for the conference was adopted. In fact, I, will, I make bold to say that the Yoruba contingent is probably uh, the most uh, tested and the most prepared in terms of paperwork. And we have constantly uh, technical papers being forwarded to us, 
from America, from Europe, through the ages of what is called the Yoruba Academy. I don't know if you are aware of the Yoruba Academy. People say that Nigeria's unity is non-negotiable. Mark Twain said that only two things are non-negotiable in life, death and taxes. Every other thing in between can be negotiated. It's in my firm belief that Nigeria's unity needs to be renegotiated because we are brought together by Lord Lugard and British colonialism without any mandate from our people. Uh, it's a caricature relationship that was hammered into existence. And 100 years later, I think it's perfectly fit and proper for Nigerians or their representatives to interrogate at the basis of the Federation. Because right now, uh, what you have is a mismatch which does not answer uh, the tenets of true federalism. And then there are urgent matters afflicting the Nigerian uh, Federation, which we have to un disentangle. And that's why I think uh, the talking shop that we're engaged in might prove to be more than a talking shop. If it can come up with uh, a formula that will rescue uh, what is actually a failing state. Nigeria has not entirely failed, but I think Nigeria is a failing state. And if we don't want Nigeria to fail, we have to do the needful to rescue uh, the tottering shape of Nigeria on the high seas. That is the position we are in right now. Hmm. So uh, uh, now that you are in the talking shop to adopt your prince, uh, is it the Yoruba agenda that Nigeria should change its name at this point? Because we understand you are now pressing for change of name for Nigeria after 100 years of our coexistence. Well, I must uh, confess that it's not part of the Yoruba agenda. In fact, some delegates uh, were miffed by my suggestion. They wondered why a Yoruba person should suggest a name like Songhai for Nigeria, which has or bears uh, closer affinity to northwest of Nigeria. Uh, it was uh, in the effort to reinvent the country. You see, President Jonathan charged us to suggest novel ideas for remaking and recreating Nigeria. And when it came to my turn, towards the end, nearly everything that I wanted to say had been said. And I did not just want to sound like a broken gramophone record. So I now thought of something different from what we had heard previously. And I remembered uh, what uh, the late uh, parliamentarian, when I was in Form 1 in 1960, but I heard of Dr. Kalu Ezera, who had suggested in 1960 that Nigeria should change to Songhai. Because, you know, the great empires in West Africa, you had Guinea, you had Ghana, you had Mali, and then you had Songhai. Nkrumah, on the 6th of March, 1957, changed the colonial name of Gold Coast to Ghana and focus the attention of Ghanaians on the new entity. Unfortunately, the leadership of Nigeria at independence was not that far-sighted to even recognize that uh, Flora Shaw, the girlfriend of uh, Lord Lugan, uh, could not give us a name because the cognomen of Nigeria uh, is derived from the Latin nigr. Nigr is black. It is from nigr that we got negro. And now, in fact, the racists now call us niggers. So, uh, in fact, it was a derisive name to give us nigger area. And every time I see Nigerian athletes at international athletic meetings and they wear tags saying NGR, it reminds me of nigger. And if even in America where rednecks, racists, are now afraid to use what is called the N-word. You don't say nigger anymore uh, in today's world. And it's still, for me, uh, antithetical uh, to our pride. And uh, as the world's largest concentration of black people to be using that epithet of Nigeria. Some guy has some relationship with uh, Nigeria. Uh, so I thought we could actually start uh, rediscovering Nigeria by changing the name and all the bad things that have been associated with Nigeria 
Nigeria is not a name that I'm proud of, uh, which, as I say, does damage and violence to our worth, you know, as Africans. Uh, even those who think that uh, River Niger uh, is the name from which the country uh, took its own description, will be shocked to realize that the traditional people did not call that river Niger. They call it Quora. Quora was the name given by the natives to uh, what the uh, people like Mongo Park and the Batin brothers or the Landa brothers suggested. You know what, when we were in primary school, we were taught that Mongo Park discovered the river Niger. But uh, I tell my own students now that it's River Niger that discovered Mongo Park. So quite sincerely, 54 years after banding the name Niger area, I think the time was right for us to depart from the iniquity of Lord Lugard and his girlfriend and create a new nation for ourselves for the next century as United Republic of Songhai. That is what uh, influenced you know, my suggestion at the CONFAB for a change from the colonial name of Nigeria to an authentic African name, to, really, to bring into life again the ancient West African Songhai Empire. But I'm sure many people are not aware. In fact, my own daughter asked me, uh, Daddy, what is Songhai? Because our students no longer read history. They do social science. And quite a number of people, in fact, a newspaper report said I caused this chair <laughs> at the confab by my suggestion. There should be no stair. It's a question of going back to our roots, you know, and trying to identify uh, with one of the great empires uh, of West Africa. Why changing the name of Nigeria should be priority now, given all the things that we are confronted with? Beautiful question. In fact, the name change suggestion was a mere prelude to my intervention. My intervention uh, was on uh, the caricature of uh, federalism that we are practicing. So the, for me, the name change was just a footnote. The major thrust of my intervention was that, uh, because I told the audience, the delegates, I, I don't have a national award, I'm not MNI, I'm not OFR, I'm not CON. But I have certain uh, suffix to my name. And I started off with that, not because of braggadocio, but they had to know where I was coming from. I told them that uh, I studied in the Ukraine, I studied uh, also in Massachusetts, and I studied also in Ontario. So that I have uh, I've lived and studied in three federations, one of which has been defunct, but don't forget what is happening in Ukraine right now. It's an unfinished business. And if you did not want to suffer the fate of the USSR, uh, that Nigeria had to reconsider and review uh, the tenets of federalism. In other words, I, can't, I, I asked for true federalism, fiscal federalism, decentralization, what you call devolution, and that we have to revisit are the deleterious aspects of federalism that we can claim to be practicing. I told the audience that the military killed off federalism because militarism and federalism are odd bedfellows. The centralized command structure of the soldiers was antithetical to the notion of federalism because federalism envisages some division of powers between the federal government and the constituent units. You might call them states. In Canada, they are called provinces. In the old Soviet Union, they were republics. It's, it does not really, really matter what name you give the constituent units. But we have to reconfigure in order, as I said, to give Ni uh, Nigeria or Songhai, if you will, a new lease of life. And so there are all sorts of things that we have to review and disentangle. So we are, we are just warming up to go to the real business of the confab. So the, all, the, all I did was a mere foretaste of what is in the offing. But the papers carried change of name as if that was all I spoke about. Mm -hmm. But no regrets, not at all. And it makes it very important. Not only that, you see, Carlo Ezera, as I said, uh, had just come back with degrees 
uh, from Ivy League universities in America and a PhD from Oxford. He was a member of the Federal House of Representatives in 1960, very far-sighted and enlightened political scientist. But then he was talking to an audience that was not prepared for the message because we didn't have an Nkrumah in Nigeria. The Ghanaians, you can see the focus that Nkrumah gave his people. We lacked that focus in 1960. And my belief, honest belief, is that 54 years thereafter, perhaps we can revisit that issue. I don't think I've committed any crime by suggesting that we change the name of Nigeria to the United uh, Republic of Songa. Perhaps it's not the people's reaction. Well, I don't know. I don't know. People, there are so many skeptics and so many cynics and so many people who felt that, uh, uh, what, 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 what is this prof saying now? Is it an, is it an issue? They said they are happy to be called uh, nigger area. But some of us, we reject uh, that uh, cognomen because it does grave injustice to our sense of pride as Africans. Mm, let's cap it with this. Uh, you already, uh, you know, ascribed the ongoing confab as talking shop. It is. Uh, but, uh, do you, but you're still going regardless. Uh, like tomorrow, I understand your flight is in the morning, you're going to the confab again. Uh, do you see anything coming out of this, from this talking shop after all? Well, between us, uh, we just have to be optimistic. Uh, we keep hope alive that you never know. Let's go there and shake the tree, as I said, whether some fruits will fall. If you go by the agony of uh, Jonathan, Jonathan was agonizing over the state of Nigeria. You just need to read his speech. And he threw the gauntlet back at uh, the delegates. And some of us decided we have to pick up the gauntlet and push as hard a bargain as we, ha we can in order to recreate, reinvent, and reestablish a country that will survive. Nigeria now is torturing. We are at the precipice. And if we don't want Nigeria to collapse, because we are being buffeted, Boko Haram in the north, uh, kidnappers in the east, ritualists in the west, you can see that things are not wholesome in Nigeria. And we can't run away from what is happening. The Fulani are cutting heads and burning houses in the middle belt. Anybody who pretends that everything is hunky-dory in Nigeria doesn't know what he's talking about. We are really spending, shall I say, the last throes of the existence of a moribund formation. And the only way to escape you know, the tragedy that is looming large uh, in the country is to create the wherewithal for the survival of this country. I said previously in an interview that I gave to you that we are five minutes to midnight. And I think the, the, the clock has moved about three minutes now to midnight. But, and you can see people have a lot of hope and confidence. They are earnestly waiting for what will come out of that conference. Strikers want to come, except that the security is so tight to even enter the premises. It's very difficult. So all those who wanted, who have abandoned the National Assembly because they see our future more in the confab than at the three-armed zone in Abuja. And that's the truth. Majority of Nigerians are following the debate with keen anticipation that something good and positive will come out of the proceedings. So I share their optimism, but then I'm a realist because really it's a talking shop. It has no... Uh, law, setting it up. In other words, I said that we are embarking on a journey without a compass. But it might well be that Jonathan will be able to pull out a rabbit uh, from his heart, as I said, because right now the conference is facing uh, an identity crisis in terms of, even when you look at some of the people who are there, who were accused of having brought Nigeria to where it is, uh, the young people are angry that even people like me, as a young old man, that uh, my time is past. Uh, the youth want to go there, but I think we have to be balanced. There are a few young people there, but I agree the overwhelming majority of the delegates are beyond the, their prime. But as I said, let us just uh, be optimistic. But as I said, uh, it's the Nigeria's last chance. We are the last bus stop, if you ask me, this particular conference. 
Because if you don't get things right at this conference, I shudder to contemplate uh, the consequence. I think it's going to be more bad news. This is the real last opportunity for Nigerians to reinvent their country and themselves. So let us be optimistic. I hope that we come up with a good forthright uh, solutions to the various uh, problems that have been afflicting the Nigerian nation state.